Good morning and welcome to Mass on this feast of St. Mary Magdalene. Uh, she's not in the Book of Common Prayer, neither did she find her way into the 1928 prayer book, but nevertheless, Mary Magdalene is celebrated as of being great significance as the apostle to the apostles, conveying the news of the Lord's resurrection. So we offer Mass today in her honour, and we should remember all those churches, parishes, and uh, basilicas under her patronage, uh, not least the great basilica in Vézelay in France, where her relics are housed. The ungodly laid wait for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies, O Lord. I see that all things come to an end, that thy commandment is exceeding broad. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment and the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son restored Mary Magdalene to health of mind and body, and called her to be a witness to his resurrection, Forgive us our sins, we beseech thee, and heal us by thy grace, that we may serve thee in the power of his risen life, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, now and forever. Amen. Epistle is taken from the Book of Wisdom. I will rise and go about the city, in the streets and in the broad ways. I will seek him whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. The watchmen that go about the city found me. To whom I said, Saw ye him whom my soul loveth? It was but a little that I passed from them, but I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hinds of the field, that ye stir not up nor awake my love till he please. Set me as a seal upon thine heart as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death, jealousy is cruel as the grave, the coals thereof are coals of fire, which have the most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. 
if a man would give all the substance of his house for love, he would utterly be contemned. Here ends the epistle. Holy Gospel is written in that according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter, beginning at the 36th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time, one of the Pharisees desired Jesus that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet, and behold, A woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed five hundred pence and the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman, I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, But this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, The same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? He said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven 
and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Poor Mary Magdalene. Confusion surrounded her from very early on. It was clear from the New Testament that she was a woman whom Jesus had delivered from evil spirits and who came to love and follow him. She was present at the crucifixion and was the first to find the empty tomb and meet the risen Christ on Easter morning. But then came the questions. Was she the notorious prostitute who washed the feet of Jesus with her hair and anointed him for his passion? Or was she Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus at Bethany? And beyond the New Testament, there were further mysteries. Early legends had her in Ephesus with St. John, dying in Constantinople. But it was also said that Mary, with several others, sailed from Palestine across the Mediterranean to France and landed at the place called Les Saintes Marie de la Mer. In modern times, her story continues to intrigue and fascinate. In Scorsese's film, The Last Temptation of Christ, she is the power of the flesh. Jesus must resist if he is to be true to his divinity. More thoughtfully, perhaps, Tim Rice in Jesus Christ Superstar artfully portrays her as the conflicted woman perplexed by the passionate feelings Jesus arouses in her, part spiritual, part erotic. To feminists, she is the symbol of the liberated woman who courageously found her own voice and challenged patriarchy. In the spiritual tradition, she is the model penitent and contemplative. We might ask on her feast day, why is this confusion? I think we can point to a number of reasons. For one thing, she stands out in the Gospels as a woman in a world of men. Not uniquely by any means, but more sharply drawn than any of the others, including our Blessed Lady herself. You imagine her wearing red and purple like she does in Caravaggio striding across the gospel story saying, notice me, notice me. For another, her obvious closeness to Jesus raises questions about his emotional life and the part normal human affection played in his psyche. And finally, she is the woman with an altogether unique role in history. She loved Jesus, though not perhaps more than others loved him, especially John. 
but she was given a privilege denied even to John to be the first witness of the resurrection and to take the news of Easter to the other disciples. So who is she to us? What makes her so memorable for me is her colourful unconventionality. She doesn't fit the image of the subservient woman in the ancient world. Her relationships were unorthodox, her lifestyle unapproved. And what is most astonishing, perhaps, is that Jesus seems to affirm her subversive personality. Not once does he criticize Mary Magdalene as he criticized others in his inner circle, Peter, James, John, and even his own mother. And she is one of the two women who finds the tomb empty and to whom the announcement of the resurrection is entrusted. And this, when one of the other Easter narratives specifically anticipates how the resurrection message will be ridiculed as just so much idle gossip. Apparently, exactly the kind of thing women are prone to. In Mark's spare, understated resurrection story, no one else, and specifically no man, sees the empty tomb. Why put the story of the resurrection at such risk? Why not suppress the awkward fact of her being the key witness of the resurrection when the story would have been much more credible had it been Peter or John who told it? Above all, why of all people have her sent to tell the others about the resurrection in a role that is nothing short of apostolic. Apostle to the apostles, she's called. Maybe because the whole project of redemption is risky. Will it be believed? Will it be received? Will it be acted upon? Maybe God himself cannot know the answer, but in faith he sends Jesus because that is all he has left to do to win the human race back around again. It begins with wayward Mary, the first witness of the resurrection, when, she call, when Jesus calls her by name in the garden, Mary, she knows that she is alive again, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Rabunai, she cries. And in that moment, a lifetime of passion and pain, search and longing, Hunger, fear, and hope is gathered up. It's perhaps the greatest recognition seen in human history. For she recognizes him on behalf of the human race, on behalf of us as the Son of God. Thank God for Mary Magdalene. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal Church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. I grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travel and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul said, this is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John said, 
If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. <clears throat> it is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. And now we give thee thanks that thy glory is revealed in Mary Magdalene and all the saints. In their lives thou hast given us an example of faithfulness to Christ. In their holiness we find encouragement and hope in our communion with them, we share the unity of thy kingdom. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee. And grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Think ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, 
to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life.
Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.